when you're riding your bike or trike in a new unknown area where you don't know where to go or what you need to visit? Do you appreciate riding to a dedicated rest area for cyclists where you can rest, have a shower, get information about the area and enjoy the view? That's what this is about. At the moment, we're arriving to Lake Palic. You can see some cyclists gathering on the other side of the road. And uh, in fact, we're here to join them. The other day, we saw an invitation for this group ride on one of the local Facebook groups. And uh, this ride is planned as a promotion of a new rest area for cyclists and hikers on Lake Ludash, which is not far from here. So there will be a ride on uh, one of the recommended trails from Palic to Ludash and around the lake. Ludash. We actually visited uh, this place last summer during our summer cycling adventure uh, but at that time we didn't even know how to approach the lake so we only found one uh, deck where we can get closer to the water but this time there will be a local touristic guide who will tell us more about the place and uh, we're looking forward to it. Let's see, where is Blanca? Hello! Hello! Father and son driving bicycle. We arrive on our first destination, and uh, this is some new building, uh, which is for the cyclist. And uh, I think that this is the official opening of the place. Vidya Straklasha, up. Let's check it out. So that's it is. Hmm? So this was our first destination for today. Uh, in fact, today is the opening of this place. It is a rest area for cyclists and hikers. It is a um, they said it's uh, like in the middle of uh, three Eurovelo paths that you can uh, take by a bike in Serbia. Those are Eurovelo 6, Eurovelo 11 and Eurovelo 13. Uh, Eurovelo is a network of cycling paths in Europe, in case you're not familiar with that. So these three, uh, the, the three paths cross uh, the area of Serbia and uh, our region Vojvodina. If you are uh, traveling by bike on any of these three uh, cycling paths, you can take a small detour and come to this place and explore this uh, micro region. There are uh, three uh, paths that you can take in the neighborhood that you can uh, hike or bike uh, on these paths. And uh, you can visit the Lake Ludash, which is a natural reserve area uh, with, uh, again, uh, lots of uh, birds and uh, wild species who are inhabiting uh, this, uh, this lake and you can just go around and enjoy the nature and have fun. It seems that uh, in Serbia people are getting into this uh, cycling uh, and ecotourism mode, so it's nice to see some activism in, uh, in this direction to open uh, such uh, rest places and uh, uh, label the designated bike paths so that people in the region will feel more welcome to start cycling and uh, go on such trips. Thank you. 
And from up here you can enjoy in the view of the endless fields of Vojvodina, the Pannonian Plain. No hills in sight. <laughs> no, no. And now we are following a dirt road to the lake, I think. We are going through the fields. Generally in this area people uh, grow uh, wheat, sunflower, corn, soya and the yellow flowers that we see in the back are the most beautiful at this time of year. That is the rapeseed, the oil plant. It is a bit strange to be on the group ride. For us this is the first group ride since the Covid started, so more than one year. It's a bit narrow for the trike, but okay. that are not that strike friendly so we have to ride with one wheel at least in this high grass so it's easier on a regular bike <laughs> We arrived to Rokin Salas, or uh, in Hungarian it's called Róka Tanya. Uh, you might remember a Salas, or in Hungarian Tanya, is a traditional farmhouse in this area and now it's usually transformed into a restaurant or a guest house. First we had a nice presentation by a local guide who told us a lot about the history of this place, of this farmhouse and uh, the uh, surrounding uh, villages of the lake. Actually, this salas, this farmhouse, belonged to a family who had a little ferry, which uh, they used uh, to transport uh, people and goods from uh, several farmhouses on this side to the other side to a village, and uh, also back from the village to the farmhouses. And uh, it's uh, interesting that uh, there was a ferry on, a, on this lake, usually a ferry is uh, on a river, at least here. And uh, the guide said that when people wanted to cross, uh, they would just shout over the water and call for the ferry to come and pick them up. After the presentation, we had the chance to walk around and explore the farmhouse and the garden and just uh, spend some time in this beautiful place. And on this side we can enter the Ethno House, where we can see how the people lived here from the 18th century. So the first thing we can notice, as uh, I think is the case with all the old houses, is that the people were shorter than we are today. So you see, my head hits the door and I'm not the tallest person. The house is a typical mud house made from uh, hardened mud 
to the front we have something that is called an open chimney so here was the fireplace where they would build the fire just like that without the furnace and uh, the smoke would go out through the chimney just by the entrance uh, you can wash your hands and your face and uh, also there are some traditional wooden shoes similar to what they have in the Netherlands Here is the living room. On the left, we have a furnace, a round furnace, where uh, the warmth would come from the fireplace. And so people could sit on this bench all around it to get warm. There are also these wooden like shovels or desks that uh, they use to put the bread in the furnace to bake it. And then some more traditional uh, dishes and uh, some photos from the old times. Sewing machine and um, tools for making shoes. Probably they were shoemaking people. We can see that the floor is made of mud, just beaten hard. To the other side from the entrance, we can enter a sleeping room where we can see they put uh, some wooden floor. In this room there are also many old uh, objects, photos and a little baby cradle and beds, also some like family photos. We can see that the beds were uh, higher from the ground but also the people were shorter so the bed is actually quite short. In this room there is the same furnace like in the first one and there are some interesting instruments here. <laughs> we have a chair similar to this at home. It's from my great-grandmother. <laughs> They invite us for a taste of local wine, which is very tasty. Cheers! Giant mosquito. David went to the front like a big guy. Unfortunately, there is no cycling path that would connect Aydukovo to Palic, so we have to ride on a regular road. But that's not really far, a few kilometers. But as we are reaching Palic, we can get on a cycling lane to the right.
and we're getting back to the starting point of our tour to this water tower of Palic and also it is the entrance to this beautiful park on the lake Palic David is so fast that I cannot catch him So the group tour is finished, but for us the ride doesn't end <laughs> and uh, we will go to one more place. You guessed it, food. It's the best ice cream in Vojvodina. Thank you.